Say amen. Amen. We're going through. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, again, we are asking you the prayers, preaching and praying are good friends. They love to hang out with one another. And uh, as I always share, I've never graduated out of the kindergarten class of prayer. You never get too big for prayer. And you never get to a point to where you are promoted beyond the need of prayer. And all of us are here because somebody somewhere on some day in our days, <laughs> they prayed for us. Amen. The book of, of Deuteronomy is a book of, uh, one would say, repetition, and a book uh, that serves as Moses' letter to the Hebrew people who came out of bondage. And God exposed them to freedom. And he promised them a land. And this book was written for the purpose of reminding the people who were on the brink of entering into the promised land. And now, don't you forget the God who brought you out. Don't you forget the God who brought you out of the house of bondage. Don't forget when you get over into the land, uh, when you begin to eat from uh, grapevines, uh, those grapes from those vines that you didn't plant, trees, uh, the fruit uh, that you eat that you didn't plant, remember that it was God who brought you through. Amen. Amen. And so when uh, we go from hooptis to a smooth ride in automobile, don't forget uh, the God uh, who brought you from where you were to where you are now. Uh, someone declared, don't forget the house that you used to live in because you might have to move back. Stay with me. Don't forget the beans and cornbread that brought you through, that brought you over, that brought you out because uh, there may come a day when you may have to resort back to beans and uh, cornbread. Somebody said every day. Say every day. And so don't forget the God who brought you from where you were to where you are now. You were once on the dock, but now you're behind the desk. Don't forget the God who brought you through. Amen. 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 And in our text, we have uh, the words of uh, Moses reminding his uh, uh, people about that God who brought them through. And we see in verse 17 these words written by Moses declaring to his people, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords. He is the great God. He is the mighty God. He is an awesome God and he's a God that shows no partiality nor does he take bribes? And you need to remember this God because there's no one, as we're going to see, there's no one quite like him. And then what Moses wants to share with us is just don't remember him at the end of the day, but you need to begin with him at the start of it. Day because uh, there's going to be some stuff down in the promised land yeah. that are going to challenge you. That stuff yeah. that challenges us every day when we yeah. leave the crib, say amen. And it's good to know that before we leave, we need to remember the kind of God that we serve. Amen. You don't know what a day may bring. That's right. 
but yet I serve a God, we serve a God uh, uh, who's able to handle any and every day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, what, what does Moses want the, the people to remember about God at the start of every day? Well, first of all, uh, Moses uh, wants the people to remember uh, why, yeah, remember uh, why God is, why is why he is your God. Say, man, it's good to remember why God is uh, your, why, why did you choose him? Right. Amen. Uh, why, why did you choose uh, uh, this uh, God? Well, uh, first of all, uh, what uh, Moses wants to share uh, with them is uh, that he is uh, a God of great distinction. He begins uh, with the fact acknowledging God as Lord. Say amen. Yes. If you note the word Lord is in capital letters, that uh, depicts God as being the great Yahweh, the creator God of, uh, of the Bible, the self existing God. He wants uh, to remind them that when you get over into the land there are going to be some idol gods. Say man. Uh, but yet your God is the great L-O-R-D. He is the God uh, who has always been. He is self existent. No one made him. No one thought about him and how to make or to shape him. He has always been. And you know when I just think about that each and every time I mention it, it just causes me just to contemplate. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but that's all right. It just gets me to contemplate how great our God is and how awesome, say amen, that he is. Because when you think about we serve a God who has always been. I know your mother, your father. I know what neighborhood you are out of. I know your folk. I know who gave birth to you. Some, I know what hospital city you were born in. But when it comes to God, God has always been. No, yeah, he is a self-existing God. And if he self-existed, and then if a self-existing God created everything, then surely he can handle anything. And so you need to remember before at the very start of every day that he is uh, the capital L, uh, the capital O, uh, the capital R, and the capital D. He is God, he is the great Yahweh, and he is God of all those who want to claim to be God. Say amen. Yeah, God, God is God of all the gods uh, who claim to be God. No one is uh, as uh, awesome, as great as the L-O-R-D. Amen. He's God uh, of God. Note what the text says. He is, uh, he is Lord, then he's God of gods. Uh, that word God uh, yeah, capitalized. It speaks of and about our God uh, being the great Elohim. And all it means, he's God uh, of all gods uh, because the other gods, little g, say man, can't compete with the, uh, yeah, capital G-O-D because uh, he's the great Elohim. The word Elohim depicts our God um, as a multifaceted God. There's no situation or circumstance that he cannot work in. And say amen. The devil will try to convince you that God cannot handle your situation. No, God can handle anything and everything. He's a multifaceted God. And so he can handle, yes, the circumstance of Jim. He can handle the situation of Jane. He can, yeah, deal with t nights Say amen. He can deal, yes, with Tawana. It doesn't matter what the names are. The Lord can handle the situation. And then he's the great Elohim. So the same time he's handling Jim's situation, he can also handle Joe's situation. When Jim is praying to God, and when Joe is praying to God, at the same time Jim is praying to God, God doesn't get their prayers mixed up. Say amen. He's the great Elohim. He hears. He hears Joe, he hears Jim, it doesn't matter, he hears and he answers prayer. I'm so glad that we 
serve a God like that. Listen, he is God of all gods. He is the capital. Yes, G-O-D, and he is unlike, yes, the lowercase gods. Yeah, G-O-D. He is the God of gods. And so he's God of gods. Not only is he God of God, but he is a Lord of Lords. Listen, sometimes this is good to know and to be reintroduced to the God that we serve. He is the great Yahweh. He is the great Elohim. And the word Lord there in just a regular sentence case letters depicts him as the great Adonai. Say amen. He is Yahweh. He is Elohim. He is Adonai. The word Adonai depicts God as being the God of strength. Yes, he is Lord of Lords. Doesn't matter who is claiming to be Lord, who are called Lords. He is the big L-O-R-D. Yes, and he's over and superior and stronger than the lowercase L-O-R-D's. As a matter of fact, the lowercase L-O-R-D's, they come and they go, but our God is always there. Somebody ought to give the Lord praise and glory because he is God of God's and he is Lord of Lords. Now you would have thought that the writer would have stopped there. He's God all by himself. He's Lord all by himself. But then he moves on to declare that our God is great. He is the great God. And the word great depicts our God as being a God who is great at everything that he does. Everything that God does is just great. Say amen. Everything that he does is just great. Every act he performs is just great. Every moment of deliverance yet that he bestows upon on individuals, it's great. Every time when we are painted into a corner, we call out to him, he gets us out of the corner. God is great. Every time we in the ditch and we cry out to the Lord, and the Lord picks us up out of the ditches of life, dusts us off, turns our life around, it is great. Say amen. Look at somebody. Somebody screaming on the tail. Somebody that every sets out to do he does it in a great fashion somebody ought to say thank you Jesus you would have thought that Moses would have stopped there Amen. yes he's a great God but then he moves on and he declares that he is yes our undefeated champion it's right there in the text he declares that he is a mighty God that word mighty in the Hebrew it depends Yes, and describes the mighty champions of the day. Mighty men of the day. There are men who are trying to exalt themselves as God and declare that I am mighty, but no, God is our undefeated champion. Say amen. And what they did in those days, they celebrated their champions. Listen, that's what we do every Sunday. We come together for the purpose of worship, yes, for celebrating our champion, the big L-O-R-D, yeah, the big G-O-D, and the big Adonai, say amen, who sent his son by the name of Jesus, and if you don't know how to spell that, that's J-E-S-U-S, and so you have, listen, God is somebody, and if you don't think that he's somebody, well, just keep on living, and just keep your eyes open, and you see God working everywhere, say amen, God is a God who is matchless, well, you would have thought that he would have stopped there, he's our undefeated champion, and nobody has taken his title from him, say amen, say nobody has taken his title for it from him. He's still champion and he still reigns. He is the mighty one and he still is on the throne. Well, you would have thought that where well, Moses would have stopped there 
Uh, you know, he is the great Yahweh. He is the great Elohim. He is Adonai. And that God sent his son by the name of Jesus. And then this God we serve is great. Everything that he does is just great. Say, he woke us up this morning. Somebody else said, that's great. He laid us down last night and allowed us to get a good night's sleep. Somebody ought to say, that's great. He put food on our table. You ought to say, that's great. He keeps seeing in our eyes. That's great. He keeps getting knowledge in our mind. That's great. God, everything that he does is great. He puts the wet in water. That's great. Old preacher said he puts the moo in the cow. That's great. He puts the meow in the cat, the bark in the dog. God is great. The blue in the sky, the white in the cloud. Everything God does is just great. Well, he is a mighty God. He's our reigning champion. Amen. And he has never been in a dethroned. Well, what type of impact does that have on an individual? Well, uh, the writer said that our God is the reason why I bow a knee and uh, reference. Amen. Yes, he Amen. respect him. That is right there in the text. He says, our God is an awesome God. Yeah. Awesome. And he, he's, he's awe-inspiring. And the way the word is penned in the Hebrew, it makes uh, the person who knows God, when they recognize that he's an awesome God, it causes them to bow down on their knees. Hallelujah. And recognize that you are awesome all by yourself. Yes, what, what God has done ought to move us periodically to our knees and declare that you are awesome. Listen, when I think about the awesomeness of God, I don't have to move beyond myself. He's just an awesome God. Because of what he's done 
for me and my life. Yes. Yes. Amen. But then, uh, secondly and lastly, we need to remember, yes, why, why we can claim God mm -hmm. to be our God. Amen. Amen. We, we start each day by, by remembering, yes, that he is our God, but then secondly, uh, yes, uh, at the start of each day, we need to always remember. Yep. Why we can claim him yep. to be our God. Amen. Well, it's just right there in the text, and it's so simple. <laughs> Say amen. amen. But we can claim him to be our God because God is not partial. Amen. Say amen. amen. He's not the biased in any way. Amen. 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 And all that means that God doesn't look over anybody. Amen. 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 And there's that, that, that some, yes, who may depend or should I say reach out to others, call out to others, but they look over me. Well, our God is not a God who's partial. And the reason why we can claim him as our God is because when we called out to him, when we were in need, as the responsive reading declared, when we were in need, God stopped by our place. Say amen. 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 He's just not a God who lives out on a hill. Yes, who lives somewhere in a nice place. But God also, he lives down where there's shanties. God yeah. just doesn't yeah. act on the, the hilltop, but God also moves down in the hood. Somebody yeah. ought to say, Lord, thank you. thank you. God, when we cried out to him, God, yes, uh, he answered our need and met our need. He's a God who is not partial. Yeah. And that's why we are where we are today. Right. It's because he's not a God who shows respect to the person. And secondly, the reason why we can claim him to be our God is because you can't bribe and save man. Amen. And all that means is that there are no favorites. Amen. Look at somebody, there's some folk who have more money than you. And sometimes they can get access in the places uh, that you cannot access. But I thank God for being a God who doesn't accept uh, the bride. God declared uh, if uh, you're going to be with me, if you're going to be on my side, if you're going to become my child, there's only one way. There's only one way. There's only one way. There's only one way. There's only one way, and that way is through Jesus, not with your money, not through your prestige, not through your position, not through your eloquence. No, it's all, yes, through one way, through one person, through one son, a man, and his name is Jesus. That's why we shout on your face every morning before you leave the house. The reason why I can claim God and my God is because But one way and that way is through faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Someone said, well, what do you have to believe in? Well, I'm glad, yeah. yeah. I'm glad to get to this point, this point in my sermon because how do you get to, to glory? Yes, you can't pay your way. No, no. You can't manipulate your way. No. No way, you can't sweet talk your way in the, uh, to, uh, yes, glory, well, how do I uh, get in? Well, you have to believe that first of all, God is God. And he is the great Lord, that the God of this book we call the Bible, you got to believe that he's God and God all by himself. Yes, I'm, I'm talking about the God of the Bible. There are those who will tell you that there are other ways, other gods, not according to the text. The other gods are the little G-O-Ds. There's only one L-O-R-D, big G-O-D, and he's found in the book we call the Bible. Yes, well, you got to believe 
that the God of the Bible, that he's uh, the true and the only living God. Then you have to believe John 3, 16, that this God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Well, you got to believe that Jesus, yes, came through 40 and 2 generations. You have to believe, listen, that Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem, wrapped in the swatting clothes, lying in a manger. You got to believe that when Jesus was born, the cattle started bowing. Yes, sheep and goats started bowing. Someone said, why did they all bow down? Well, they bowed down because they knew who Jesus Amen. was and they knew who Jesus is and someone in here and someone streaming you've been with the Lord a few days and now you ought to know who he is and if animals can bow down and pray Man, 
Son, I'm not Ray Lazarus from the dead, I'm not There ain't much, I'm not That the Lord cannot do, I'm not Ain't the Lord alright, I'm not But I love the Lord, I'm not And I want to tell you why, I'm not Because the same miracle, I'm not He worked out for you in your life, I'm not